what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of B is for Build. We're here working on our overlanding adventure camper truck. It's quite a mouthful. In the last episode, we talked about our overall game plan and the design that we've 3D modeled out for this camper truck where we're gonna basically take the back end off and build the ultimate kind of overlanding camping rear cabin onto this truck. And since we bought this truck sight unseen at auction, it was crashed and it actually turned out to be crashed a lot worse than we thought. This is one of the more surprising builds that we've ever seen. Uh, worth noting, with really big heavy vehicles, small crashes often cause lots of damage. So small looking damage can be really big. Smaller the vehicles, kind of the inverse. So that's something we learned, wanted to share it with you guys. Anyways, because it was crashed so badly, we actually had to chop off the old damaged frame rails and replace it with new frame rails, which we got done in the last episode. So moving forward into this episode, what we're gonna be doing is tackling getting the vehicle running and driving again like it did from the factory. When we got it, we had no power brakes, we had no power steering, and there was a whole lot of other stuff wrong with it. So in today's episode, we're gonna be replacing all of those things, reinstalling the whole front end, building a mock front end, everything but the body, to mount everything up that we need to, and then we're gonna test run it and drive it. That's in store, stay tuned. All righty, and if you guys don't remember in the last episode, we did talk about how we're gonna be doing a body swap on the front end. So we're gonna be installing a much more modern new body. We don't have those panels yet. So what we need to be doing is mock everything up in kind of a pretty tight package. Uh, that way when the new body parts do come in, we can get them all placed in here. So where you gotta start is basically like right where we left off. We're gonna be building from here outwards, keeping everything pretty tight. So we've got our serpentine belt needs to go back on here. Auto tensioner is gonna go right there. So we're gonna bolt all that stuff up. Then from here, that's where the fan clutch goes. So we're gonna mount the fan clutch right here and we'll mount our brand, our, our old fan, the plastic blades were damaged. So we got a new fan with new blades. We're gonna bolt that onto our clutch, mount that onto here. And that's gonna tell us where we can start building off for our radiator, intercooler stack, power steering cooler, trans coolers, all that good stuff. We got our serpentine belts on here, fan clutch, and our brand new fan bolted to that fan clutch. Everything is looking good so far. Now, we've got our new frame rails. These have the bushings here, and these are the body isolation bushings. So you got frame, and this is a body on frame truck. So you have to think of like that whole body and the whole front end that's soon to come all sits on stuff that then sits on these bushings. And um, we need to build our radiator mount off that same system. So that is the next step. And this is like the most technical part is we're gonna have to fabricate some stuff up. Um, so we're gonna fabricate brackets that hold the radiator and it needs to be held at the exact right spot. So it's uh, isolated two ways, isolated here, but then the radiator has some own isolation bushings. And then that needs to be perfectly height wise and horizontal will be easy but height wise it needs to land in the exact right spot so it hits that fan shroud perfectly and we have no issues there a little bit of fabrication work and then we'll get the radiator in and once we get that in it has um, all sorts of different mounting spots for the different coolers like power steering and trans to look a little bit more like factory. So we got the radiator on here on these two like kind of shelves that were built off of the, the original stand. This is very close to OEM, but we built it uh, ourselves. That's coming out, got our radiator on here, and then we have the trans and the power steering cooler. Continuing on with the cooler stack, we need to build out a bar that's gonna come across here, and that's gonna help us hold our intercooler down. This is the size of the intercooler and AC condenser right here. Huge, huge thing. Both had to buy those new replacement. Um, and then uh, we need to build a bar that comes up here. It can be either be temporary or permanent. But that's gonna hold this radiator from moving at all front to back on the truck. So we'll go ahead and get those two things in there, get the intercooler in there, and we're getting really close.
It's a good looking package, Oscar. Heard that one before? Yep. <laughs> this is really slick. So, Oscar built some uprights that are coming off of the, um, the body isolated um, frame mount uprights. And then the intercooler, once this, uh, you can kind of see right there, how it hooks around this bar. One and a one and a half inch bar to hook onto. So we shot that thing and that lives in this air gap between intercooler and radiator. So that's where the intercooler supports its weight. And then as far as like the tilt front to back, there's mounting spots up here. So we've got that bolted through like in a whole sandwich deal all the way through into the radiator right here. Now this has a little bit of wobble back and forth because it needs to be attached from up here to back here. And that's also where we hold and mount things like our fuse box right here. And actually the heaviest thing is the batteries want to live right around here. So this part, now we're moving into just, this is just temporary. We're going to throw this together in a temporary way uh, because we're going to change it to be more fitting for the body once the body parts come in. Those just got shipped, so they are on the way soon. Uh, but basically, we're just going to really quickly, temporarily do something quick and dirty from here to here so we can mount everything on both sides, get it mounted up, and then we can do our first test fire. That's looking like a rammer, I would say. Now, remember guys, just temporary, but we got this temporary thing connecting from here into here. Long term, this is gonna be all boxed in and then we'll run a nice rail. So these are the plastic trays that hold the batteries. There's one for each side. So we have a battery holder here and a battery holder over there and a potential problem that we only have one battery right now, but we'll worry about that when we get there. So um, these are in roughly the right spot so we can start to kind of set some of our wiring looms and most importantly, grounding bundles. So these things are all labeled and it's like G is for ground. Every time we pull a car apart, we uh, label all the wiring looms that we can so we know exactly what they are. So like whatever this thing is down here, no idea. And it says battery tray. You know what's funny? I just randomly grabbed that. I have no idea what this is, but it was mounted in a battery tray. Oscar, do you have any idea what this is? Uh, that was I'm literally plugged into the battery tray. Yeah. But we know that that was in the battery tray, and it looks like it goes right there. So that's a prime example of why we do all this labeling of everything. So we have grounds down here, ground right here, ground right here. We can just quickly uh, tech screw, self tapper those into any of these railings that connect to the rest of the car body, and that'll get a nice solid grounding point. And then once we attach the batteries, um, we need to do some fluids, coolant. We're just gonna do water for now in here, and then power steering fluid as well. And uh, we should be ready to give it a test fire. So let's go ahead and get all of our wiring finalized and find the other battery. <laughs> are wired up we got our grounding pins grounded out onto our frame we've got our battery trays in here our batteries in here it is actually the next day so we uh, we recharged both of these batteries that came in the truck they've been actually really uh, tough and working well for us so that's really cool got two good batteries in here fluids in here um, with the new uh, radiator and I think we're ready to plug this thing in and and give it a give it a test this is exciting okay let's do it Kyle you want to get the left battery Oscar if you want to do the right and um, I'm gonna watch Oscar since he's really good with positives and negatives. <laughs> <laughs> now, without being too dramatic, this truck did run very well before we tore the whole thing apart. <laughs> and then like, what was that, like eight months ago? Yeah, that was a long time we ago. We tore it apart so long ago, thinking we were gonna engine swap it into my RX-7. Um, so we did not pay attention to like any of the front end stuff that we ripped off. And then, well, then we decided to put it all back together like OEM. So here, that's, that's where we are now. And that's how we got here, so. Everything look good over there, Kyle? See you looking around. All right, Oscar, Cranky. you did all the frab work. Let's give you the uh, the honors. Now, one thing we should mention, our shop now is three times less size than the last shop. We cannot run a big diesel truck like this in here for a long time. It will gas us out. So um, we are gonna run it though for a little bit and, uh, and, and hopefully, got a nice ding. Yeah. Go ahead and let it rip.
Uh, I did hear a little bit of a weird, like a tick or a, like a sound something. like a crack. Hey. Some got eaten by a belt, maybe. Yeah. Let's do a little uh, looking, do a little looking around, and then we'll fire back up. All right, yeah, we checked everything, and there, whatever that sound was, it could have been the clutch hitting on the alternator. It could have been any different things that make a tick sound, but the fan and the accessory belt system, the things that are moving in there, are not grinding away at a zip tie or anything weird. So, we'll go ahead and fire it up one more time and. Running great. Happy? Yeah, it looks good. And Oscar said after the first start, we had no check engine lights or anything like that. Just a lamp out. Yeah, just obviously we have no uh, headlights, so the lamp's out. But hey, man, it's a success. We got our truck running again. Pretty badass. I think we're ready for the gambler. All right, let's go ahead and kill it. Very cool. We got an air compressor going. Oh yeah. Yeah, we, we don't know where the air compressor is on this rig. It's gonna be, it's probably underneath from the sounds of it. And then that's running to some lines. Is it right there? Yeah, it's, you can hear it, it's right here. I think it's right under here. And then you can And it runs to these lines that's trying to pressurize our airbag. So we need to get another airbag control system if we wanna tow super high volume. At this point right now, it's probably gonna be a better ride if we use just the leaf springs and stuff. But I don't know, we'll probably just find the cheapest and easiest way to control that whole system and, uh, and get it back. Because this was uh, towing a, a fifth wheel, big old gooseneck coming down in the center with a big old fifth wheel. Um, and that's why they have the uh, airbags in the back. All right, well that's pretty awesome. We got the truck running. Now, a lot of you guys have emailed me about the truck bed. Uh, I will be giving that away to one of you guys. Just hang tight. We have to figure out how we're gonna get it off the truck right now. There's not enough room in this pathetic temporary shop of ours to actually take the truck bed off and move it over here and around and get it out our garage door. It's quite a problem. So we're gonna have to get the truck outside, get it turned around and come back. There's one small thing I haven't told you guys about this shop, but it doesn't actually have a, um, it's called a grade level door. It has a dock height door, meaning uh, unless we want to go off a big jump, we can't drive this thing out and we have to drive it on the back of a flatbed. It's quite an ordeal how we moved in here. Anyways, uh, that leads into the update of we are, I feel like this close to getting our new shop. Um, there was a bit of an issue with paperwork and we're working our way through the contract phase. I do have a lot of faith that it's gonna work out. So fingers crossed, we're still moving forward and focused, laser focused and trying to get that new shop um, so we can, continue working on this. Well, I mean, we're gonna continue working on it one way or another here or in the new shop. But um, also, I've, I've got another project that I wanna kick off pretty quick, so. That is coming, thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, also I wanted to mention about the 370Z giveaway car. Giveaway has ended. My camera memory card filled up in the middle of that. 370Z giveaway car, the winner has been drawn. Uh, the sweepstakes company has yet to tell me the name. Once they tell me the name, we will be calling them. So very shortly from when you see this episode, we're gonna be calling the winner, so. Keep your phones on you. If you see a number with the Oregon area code, I'd pick up if I were you. And you guys will see that in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace!